So let us understand a little bit about live patching before I go to something else. Okay. Because the reason is uh, live patches, which is already available in the Linux kernel. So we have to do that. Okay. So now first thing is whenever you want to do any live patching, you have to do following things. You have to register your kernel live patch module. Then you have to enable the live patching feature. If you want to disable, you have to disable the live patching feature. Okay, then after that, you have to unregister the live patching feature. Okay, so for example, if you go to the registration, whatever patch you want to apply, let us assume you want to apply certain patch to the Linux kernel. Okay, so whenever you want to apply the patch to the Linux kernel, <clears throat> you have to register the patch. So basically what you have to do is whatever live patching framework you are developing, right? In that you have to feed the, you have to register the patch telling that, okay, this is the change what I'm trying to patch. So once you have to register it. So once you register that patch will be visible in the sys file system under the live patch. But it is not applied yet. But it makes up a setup for that particular mechanism to be patched. Okay, so it will set up necessary environment, necessary stuff so that it can root to this patched function. But it will not get applied until and unless you enable it. You have to go and tell that, okay, this patch has been applied to the kernel, but it's still going to the old path. It's not going to the new path. So if I want to enable the system to go to the new path, I have to go to the sysfile system to that particular patch, whatever I've applied, I have to tell enable. So the moment I tell enable, this particular new, for all the, no, the routing will not go to the old function. It will go to the new functionality and execute the new functionality and it will come back. So basically, this KLP register underscore patch is a mechanism where it will set up all the environment for the patch to be executed. By enabling this function, we'll be able to trigger the new functionalities. Okay, so we'll be able to trigger the new functionalities. And if you want to stop it at any point of time, I can stop it also. Okay, so what I have to do? The enabled flag has to be disabled. So you can enable the patch whenever you want, and you can disable also. That is a kind of feature what you get by using this live patch technique. You can enable the feature, and if you want, you can disable also at any point of time. That is what you can do it. Okay, for example, for the patches, what has been applied, it'll be something like this. If you see here, before patching, it'll be something like this. It'll introduce kind of an op before. All the functions, right? All the traceable functions in your Linux kernel, right? Whenever you tell, okay, this is the function, I have to trace it. Or this is the function where there is high probability of patching. You have to mark it. Once you mark it, right, it'll introduce an op before that. Okay. So now this is how the functionality will be happening normally. It will go nop, nothing to add to. It will execute the original function and it will come back. But this nop will be used to an effect whenever I want to do a live patching. So after that, I will introduce a mechanism. This nop will be changed to a mechanism where it will jump to a specific point to do certain actions. Most of the time, to do a specific point where F trace will come into the picture. which will tell that it will redirect telling that it will from the F trace, it will get to know that, oh no, I have to do, I should not execute the original function, but I have to execute the replacement function. From there, it will go to the, from the F trace, it will come back to the replacement functionality. It will execute the replacement functionality and then it will return back. This is what happens after you do a live patching. So if you apply a live patching, it will be something like this most of the times. If you don't, if you want to disable the live patching, moment you tell if you want to disable the live patching, it will become not. Means it will execute the original function. Or else the, there will be a routing to the call where some F trace handling will happen. Okay. Uh, then after that, it will indicate that what function has to be triggered and that function will be triggered and then it will come back without uh, go, returning from the original function. Like this, you will be able to replace, uh, you will be able to replace the functionality. Okay. In case, if you want to remove this patching at any point of time,
if you feel rather than enabling and disabling if you feel this patch itself is not required on the system you can remove it at any point of time by using this unregistration function this is something so when you do an unregistration function this entire mechanism will be removed actually it will there will be no trace of this by telling enabling or disabling you will put a nap here or you will put a necessary call to route to the necessary point that is what you will be doing while you are doing an enabling or disabling okay so now by seeing this what do you understand actually so is it a, so we so according to this so we should be able to do something like this right it's feasible right or do you have any questions on this so do you think it is feasible mechanism or do you think it will not work out because this will work i'm sure because people are using it okay so uh, but do you have any questions to the why how it will work or uh, is it uh, fine actually at least at an eye level if you look at it uh, so, so can i go to the pre previous slide yes just give me a second yeah okay. so here we are, we are registering the function patch 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 function patch basically okay so whatever patching you want to do right you will you will apply to this thing and tell okay this is what i have to apply as a patch okay and then we, we enable that for that we if you patch. then after that uh, once you do patching right it will create an environment similar to this like this it will create an environment it will create an f trace it will create the k patch it will create a replacement but it will not be linked so it will not be jumping till this point it will be nop only it will create all the environment but this link is missing okay got it it will mm -hmm. load the functions in the memory for uh, execution it will create an all the fra stuff such that it can execute uh, go to this so everything it will make the change but it will not be calling this moment i enable right it will start uh, it will make a link such a way that whenever you execute this code right it will go via this and it will come back it will not go via this path Okay, so the patch one is the replacement function, the new function. Yes. Okay, so so what, what happens to the original function? That is the replacement. That will also be there. Work. That will also be there. Original function will be there. Okay, old will also be there. New will also be there. It will never use the old one. It will be routing to the new one. That is how this patching works. Okay. You can't remove the old code. Okay, this is this is not overridden, maybe. Oh no, uh, no overridden. Old one will also be there. So before entering the old function, that is what that is what they do for all the traceable function, right? They create a nop. It is like an entry point. Okay. So what they do is, if nothing is there, it will it will execute the nop, original function, and it will come back. If I replace the nop with a specific routing point, right? It will go to that routing point. That routing point, moment it enters the routing point, then it will never come back to the original function. It will execute the replacement function, and it will come back. Okay. Okay. So we, we so I can assume like I have a new function in another place. I am enabling mm -hmm. that in the live patch directory. So once yes. that is enabled, then yes. my old the the traf, the request will go to my new function rather than my old function. Yes, rather than being a new function. Yes, correct. You're right. Okay, so See, for example, I'll just give you one example. Let us assume that. Uh, you have the HD. You let us assume you have a. Uh, uh, I'm just telling you there is one shop one. Let us assume there is a shop one. Okay. So next to that, there is let us assume the before before right. You are going to the shop one. You are doing the shopping and you you are coming out. Okay. Let us assume there is a. Let us assume there is one item which is not there in the shop one. They have to root it. What they do is, they will have a person to tell that they will find out what item you want if that item is not there here right they will tell we don't have it please go here they'll do a routing okay so now you'll never come to the shop one so you will do all the shopping in the shop two and then you'll go back actually something like that basically but both yeah. the shops will be there but instead of going to the shop one you'll be routed fully to the shop two that is what happens so I'm just trying, trying to find the difference between static and live patching. So in, in, in the static, case of a static patching, we the static override patching, the file. You'll override everything. The old and new will not be there in the together. Ah, okay. And for the static, since you're modifying the complete change, right? You have to reboot the system for the new one to take effect. You can't do that actually. Okay. For the new changes to take effect, you have to reboot the complete system. But in this system, you add a new functionality to the memory, and then you do all this thing and you come out. That is what you do in this specific use case. Okay. 
Yeah, uh, now got it. Got the point, actually? Yeah, yeah now, now I'm able to understand. Yeah. yeah, so this is how it happens. Okay, so now, so now let us assume this is feasible. So it's not that it is not feasible. This is possibly feasible, okay? But you have to make use of this. Your code should have this functionality called NOP. That is the reason we use this functionality called F-trace and uh, K-probes because whenever you enable the feature called F-trace or K-probe, now automatically it will enable these features. We are adding a knob because K probes and F trace need this feature, else it can't add the debugging feature or it can do the tracing. If it wants to do it, it needs such kind of a feature. Okay, so there is already a mechanism to do that. So we use such kind of a mechanism. Okay, so now, so what is the problem you see by such kind of a technique? Is it good or is it bad? Or so what is the advantage of such kind of a technique by doing this? Let us have a look at the advantages. So what is the advantages? Zero downtime. Zero downtime. You need not do it because in many cases, right, they will have 99, 100% downtime also, or zero, zero percent downtime. They don't want any downtime. Okay. In one cases, they 1% downtime is also fine, 2% downtime is also fine. But in many critical uh, systems, right, 0% downtime is also not possible. Okay. In that scenario, it will help. Okay. That is true. Okay. So now, so what is the disadvantage of this thing, actually? So no downtime. That is, I agree. There is no downtime. So what is the disadvantage of this? Maybe the, the kernel code becomes heavy as we... It might become heavy, true, and... because you have an old one and new one, okay? Even though you know that you don't need a old functionality at any point of time, you're having that, actually. Because old is needed to for to do a fallback sometimes. When there is a problem, if you want to have a fallback, you need this, okay? So you have old one and new one, okay? And it's a bit slower, slight performance delay might be there, okay? Not too much, but a slight. I'm telling why. Because the reason is here, you will do a just uh, before, right? You are just executing the original function. Now you have to call here, do some certain actions. Then you have to jump here a little bit. So it is not too much, but you will have a slight overhead. Okay. You will have a slight overhead while executing this mechanism. That is something which you will find it. Okay. So that is something which you will see. And this is the one of the things. And one more disadvantage of live patching is you should have this feature called NOP. If you have a, if you don't have a function which is not traceable, okay, which doesn't have this feature, means that function is not marked to do this thing, then you can never do live patching to such kind of a functions. That is also one of the problems what you see on this live patching, as you can see in this specific scenario. Okay, so this is something what you will see. And then this is one of the disadvantage of your live patching because only the traceable function can be patched. It means that NOP thing I showed, right? Only this function can be uh, patched, okay? So basically, once you patch the function, right, you can't use k-return probes. Okay, because there'll be a conflict, okay? Then after that, uh, so basically, so original function will be fully ignored. So whatever k-probes you have put in the original function, right, it will be fully ignored because the code is right direct into a new function. Now. So you have to apply the k-probes to the new function. That is something which you have to do it, okay? So now if you come to the uh, OS community way, who and all are using this live patching technique, right? There's something called kernel care, k-exec, k-graft, k-patch, k-splice. So these are all the open source software that is available, which is built using the technique, whatever we discussed above. Okay, so K splice is part of the Red Hat. Okay, K patch, I think your Ubuntu uses K patch. Okay, so like this, I think K care comes in the mostly in your, uh, I think it will come in your uh, some other operating system. I'm not understood. I'm, I'm not remembering which uh, uh, distro it is there. I think it should be in send, no, not in CentOS. Something else, I suppose, because CentOS uses K splice only. Okay, I think this is there in some other kernel. I'm I forgot it, but yeah. But this is also used in some other things. So these are all the live patching as a front uh, software that is available to do the actions. But all of them are built either using K-probes, KF-trace, or live patching. This is something what you will be able to do it. Okay. So any doubts or questions till this point?